Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, what I realized I need is I need a reference design audio amplifier so when I review other amplifiers, I can compare it to something, a reference, something that people respect and know the name of. So I found one, and I'm going to show you that. And this is going to be a project we're going to start. And it's going to start with building these amplifier boards and then the power supply. In the power supply section, I want to build the power supply maybe two different ways, maybe three different ways. I got a kit, that might be one. One, the way I'd normally do it, just by building up my own. And third one, a switching power supply, which I know, that sounds crazy. Why put a reference amplifier with a switching power supply? I just want to do it to see if we can make one work where you can't tell the difference. Let's see if we can do that. It might be fun, okay? So the power supply to operate this guy, that, that's gonna be half the goal. What we want to do is put this in a box and have a finished product at the end. I just saw an original one of these designs sell today for 1500 bucks. Now, I gotta tell you, this design is about 15 years old. So that's a pretty old amplifier to sell for 1500 bucks. So that's, let's just talk about that. All right, so this would be the Ala 5 from Nelson Pass. That's a respected name in the audiophile world. He's arguably one of the top amplifier designers around. Has been for years. Guy's just tops. Okay, so he designed this about 15 years ago. It's gone through several revisions. There was a, an all of three. I don't know if there's an all of one, but they came up to all of five. Okay, and that's that's why I picked out on eBay. 45 bucks for that kit pretty good deal for that. I don't know how well it represents his original circuit, so I'm going to have to do some research. I did not get a schematic with that kit, so I'm going to have to do some reverse engineering as I build up that first one, okay? But this is a simplified schematic of his design. Now, there's several things going on that were supposed to be notable, okay? One of them, all MOSFET, at least in all the important places. I think in these two things are current sources, but they're really, it's really a circuit with a number of parts that make up these things. And I think there's a BJT or two in these circuits. Otherwise, all the, where the signal goes through, it's all MOSFET. Okay, that's one. The other thing is there's only two gain stages. Look how simple this is. It's a input gain stage, which is essentially a differential amplifier. You have the input coming into this guy, feedback hitting this guy, and what you get off of them, you give to the second stage. The second stage takes that and amplifies it again. Second uh, gain stage. Well, the interesting thing about this gain stage, it's single-ended. It's not a push-pull like you find in most amplifiers. Even Class D amplifiers have push-pull transistors. So there's arguments why this is supposed to be better. Okay, we'll talk about that as we go along too. But... So this is uh, regarded as a very high-end audiophile grade amplifier. Uh, I saw a review in a stereophile. Stereophile is respected. You know, they review all the top amplifiers. And they gave this design, a, you know, this amplifier 4.5 out of 5, which is pretty high. I mean, because they're a little bit on snobby and, you know, audiophiles, right? Can't give an amplifier a perfect number. So 4.5, pretty darn good. So I think this is going to be a great reference amplifier. So the thing is, is I want to have this in a finished box. And here, so this thing came with a bag of parts. It's got two boards, and see how long they are? The original design was, is almost a cube of one foot cube. It was 12 by 12 by I think around 11 inches, just shy I think of 11 inches tall. And it was heat sinks all the way around. It was a cool looking amp. I thought it was way cool. I don't want to buy one for 1500 bucks, but you know, I think it's pretty cool. So what I need, if you guys have any ideas about a box, I'm thinking something the size of a shoe box, you know, where heat sinks go down the sides. Uh, it has to be big enough for a transformer that might be six inches in diameter, something like that. So I'm thinking like basically a shoe box size. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Maybe a little bit bigger. I don't know. We'll see. But if you guys have some ideas, I'd like to see them. I'm going to bring you over, show you the board and the parts. And by the way, this is 45 bucks as well. 
this is a power supply that I thought we could build up and I'll talk about that later. That's done by another designer that has a name that some people recognize. So we'll see if that power supply uh, is worth building up or if we're going to build up our own or maybe we even build a switching power supply or maybe we do both. I think I want to do a switching just to see if I can make the switching quiet enough that you can't even tell the difference. Okay. And well, you would be able to tell the difference because it won't be as heavy. <laughs> but anyway, so that that would be the goal. I think it would be fun. So once we have that really good amplifier section, we can see, you know, we can compare it to the other amplifiers I'm going to re be reviewing down the road. We can also compare it to different power supplies to see, you know, how power supplies perform. Because an amplifier can only be so good. It can only be as good as the power supply. So the power supply has to be really awesome to make the power amplifier awesome. So we're gonna have some fun, you know, trading off, seeing the differences in power amplifier and the power supplies and what we can do to make the power supply work even better. You know, maybe adding filters or inrush surge protection, thermal protection, things like that. Maybe even adding a fan that only turns on at a certain temperature. Yeah, let me know what you guys think and your ideas. The other thing is the length of the videos. Should I try to keep them within 15, 20, 25 minutes? You know, 45 minutes? Like, where's the pain threshold? <laughs> so I'll just do more uh, episodes, and I'll try to, you know, cut to the quick and, and try to not drag it out too much. All right? Hey, guys, this is Come Over the Bench. Take a look at this, uh, this bag of parts. And we'll swap out parts for better parts if we think we need them, okay? All right, let's come over and take a look. All right, guys, it actually came packaged pretty well. Bubble wrap and all these bags. And these are the two boards. Let me set those aside. And I kind of divided the parts into two channels, but not really because the resistors, some of these values go in here. And, you know, there's 220s here and 220s here, but, like, all the 10Ks are right here. These are the little signal diodes little small diodes and then all the these are all film resistors and then except for these the big resistors these guys are our aluminum electrolytic switch you know we might keep the ones that are not in the signal path but the ones that are like the ceramics here and stuff we might replace those not sure yet uh, definitely I'm gonna replace at least one of those that's in the signal path then here's our big old FET let me show you close up that. And here's the three transistors. The big monster, the medium sized guy, and the little BJT guy. In regards to these power resistors, they look like metal oxides. Here, I'll show you those in just a moment. These look like 2 watt, and these are 3 watt. They should all be 3 watt, but I'm going to replace them with metal film 3 watt resistors. So these metal oxides they kind of have a rough filling to them. They're almost feel ceramic. Pretty sure that's what they are is metal oxide. Not bad resistors, power resistors. This looks like 3 watt and this looks like 2 watt. And then we have all these other metal film resistors. It looks like there's five diodes per channel. Here's the pots and ceramic caps. I can't tell if these are ceramic or, or some kind of poly, but I think they're ceramic as well. Not really sure about these green ones. And then the little LEDs are really little dudes. Then here's those uh, aluminum caps. And our big transistors. Big old, you know, metal surface to go on the heat sink. So nice size cans. And then here's our small transistors, our medium size, I guess, medium power. And these are the small signal transistors. I think these are the BJTs. Everything else is MOSFET. So, yeah, there we go. There's our parts. All right, I'm going to show you a close-up of the board. Here's the Pass A5 version 2. All right, and then uh, you can see how small these caps are for their silk screen. And the leads are too close together to actually fit square on the board. There's the M, you can tell it's a Panasonic and 105 degree C rate cap. And I kind of remember the gold stripe caps being the better 
versions of some of the Panasonic capacitors. And then right here, this is where you can either put resistor or the 220K resistor or the pot to adjust the bias. There's our output. There's the four resistors come together. Here's our input, one of the inputs, and our return. Here's the other input. This is for the XLR type input. And you can see our voltage markings. All right, here's a picture of the whole board. The plus voltage in, minus voltage. Here's the output. Here's the input. There's the ground. Here's that XLR input. Now, if you watch this plus voltage here, let's flip around and, and watch what happens. The plus voltage is right here on this back side. And this rail across here connects to all three transistors. The minus voltage is over here, and it goes down here, these three big holes, which are, it goes to these three uh, current share resistors, I think that's what they are, and here's the three FETs that they're connected to. All right, then we go back here, and then I flip it over, and this center one connects the three resistors on this end, and comes down and connects up these three transistors, on this end. And you see the ground right here, he's going off to all these different parts. But yeah, these traces, you can feel that they're heavy duty. They're two ounce copper. So you can feel the thickness on the board. That's it. All right, so you know what? I am pretty impressed with the kit so far. I went back and looked at the uh, video on eBay and the seller, a pretty good representation of the parts and stuff. I think he described it pretty well, so I can't really complain. Although he did show three watt resistors for where it looks like I have two watt and three watts. He did show what look like metal oxide resistors, which I have here, which I'm pretty sure that's what they are. I'm gonna replace those with metal film three watt resistors, and I'm gonna bring in some nice quality aluminum caps, uh, especially for the signal path. Uh, and these are nice caps I can use for other things. And there's a couple places in the circuit I think I can use these, but the circuit is obviously laid out for a better cap, so I'm gonna do that. And even the ceramic caps, Wherever the signal goes through, I'm going to replace those with poly caps. Uh, you know, you might be arguing that you can't really hear that stuff, and you probably can't. But there are arguments and information showing there is more uh, noise. I think it's called shot noise through resistors, like say metal oxide or carbon versus metal film. So, and same with capacitors. So, and it's uh, I think it's frequency independent. It's just noise across the spectrum is what I believe so uh, it's been a while since I've looked in that kind of stuff but you know what for the cost difference in the parts I'm gonna go ahead and use better parts because it's not really you know why not this is my reference design okay all right so I think we're ready to go by the way I found a schematic and it does look like this board or these two boards do represent the original design so that's good at least the amplifier I think we're gonna build one just like the original design and compare it to some other maybe improvements on that okay uh, although it looks like a really good power supply design obviously but I think we're gonna look at that and then look at other ways to improve it okay so all right guys next video I have the schematic that I can show you I'm gonna I think I'm going to do it in microcap, okay? So we can do simulations as well. So if you guys have downloaded the microcap for free, you know, link uh, for that video below. It's an awesome software. It used to be 4700 bucks. Now it's free. So I'd, I'd recommend downloading that, and I'll see if I can share my file with whoever wants it. I think that'll be the next video, okay? And I'll get these things built up, and... 
I might show the build up version. Uh, it might be waiting for some parts, but yeah, I think I might be able to show that in the next video as well. All right? Okay. Hey, thanks, Patreons, for the support. Thanks, everybody, for watching the channel, and appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.